Section 13 of Modern Russian Poetry, an Anthology, selected and translated by Babette Deutsch and Avram Yavrolinsky. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kevin Davidson. Igor Severyanin, pseudonym of Igor Lotovyov. The story goes that at the beginning of his poetic career, Severyanin took his constitutional on the Nevsky Prospect, wearing a yellow shirtwaist with green roses painted on his cheeks. He enjoys the distinction of having founded the ego-futuristic group in Petrograd, which opposed the cubo-futurist group in Moscow. He later betrayed the coterie, but remained faithful to its canons of sound against sense. His insistence on neologisms and words created ex nihilo has produced a style which is becoming a poetic idiom. Yet a genuine musical quality saves some of his intolerably clownish and vacuous verse. His first book, The Thunder Seething Cup, was published in 1913 and ran into seven editions in two years, and he has now some ten volumes to his credit. His poetry recitals have diverted both Tsarist and Bolshevist Russia. And it passed by the seashore. Poesa Mignonette. And it passed by the seashore, where the foam laces flower, where the city barouches only rarely are seen. There the queen played her Chopin in the high palace tower, and there listening to Chopin, the young page loved the queen, and what passed there was simple, and what passed there was charming. The fair page cut the pomegranate as red as her dreams, then the queen gave him half thereof, with graces disarming. She outwearied and loved him in sonata-sweet themes, then she gave herself stormily, till night shut her lashes, till the sun set the queen lay there she slept as a slave and it passed by the seashore where the turquoise wave washes where sonatas are singing and where foam frets the wave a russian song lace and roses in the forest morning shine shrewdly the small spider climbs his cobweb line Dews are diamonding and blooming fairy bright. What a golden air, what beauty, oh, what light! It is good to wander through the dawn shot rye, good to see a bird, a toad, a dragonfly, hear the sleepy crowing of the noisy cock, and to laugh at echo and to hear her mock. Ah, I love in vain my morning voice to hurl, ah, off in the birches but to glimpse a girl, glimpse, and leaning on the tangled fence to chase dawn's unwilling shadows from her morning face, ah, to wake her from her half-surrendered sleep, tell her of my new-sprung dreams that lift and leap, hug her trembling breasts that press against my heart, stir the morning in her, hear its pulses start. Spring Apple Tree, Aquarelle An apple tree in spring shakes me to see it grow, its branches whitely weighted with unmelting snow. So might a hunched-backed girl stand, beautiful and dumb, as trembling the tree stands and strikes my genius numb. It looks into the wide pale shadows, mirror clear, seeking to shed the dews that stain it like a tear, and stilled with horror, groans like a rude rusty cart, seeing the dismal hunch mocked by the pool's bright art, when steely sleep alights upon the silent lake for the bent apple tree, as for a sick girl's sake I come to offer tenderness the boughs would miss. I press upon the petal-perfumed tree a kiss. Then trustingly, with tears, the tree confides her care to me and brushes with a touch my back-blown hair. Her boughs encircle me, her little twigs in lace, and I lift up my lips to kiss her flowering face. 
Nikolai Kluyev. This sophisticated folk poet, a peasant by birth, began to write just before the outbreak of the war, when he brought out three volumes of verse within two years. His mastery of his medium has developed steadily. His imagery, vivid and concrete, derives from two sources, the routine of rural life and Christian symbolism. Kaluyev hailed the social revolution and Russia as its messiah. His most recent work, The Izba Songs, has a quality of deep and original homeliness. A Northern Poem Sunset dreams on fir-tree cones, Green the hedge and brown the field. Mossy rifts in weathered stones Meekly vernal waters yield. Oh, look up the wooded steep, God has touched it with his palm. Piously wild berries weep, Listening to the grassy psalm. And I feel no fleshy tie, And my heart's a springing mead, Come, ye pilgrims, white and shy, Peck the early wheaten seed. Tender evening twilight searches, Cottage windows, gabled byres, And the leaves of slender birches Glimmer soft as wedding fires. And Isba Song The stove is orphaned now, The old housewife has died. The trivet tells the pot with tears, their talk is harried. Behind the pane two trustful magpies side by side chirp. May is near. Today the finches will be married. Smith Woodpecker, with busy knocking, has stripped his throat. The mole, the sullen miner, creeps sunward, meekly leaving his tunnel. Dark estate to bugs without a groat. The cranes are homing now. The sparrow, pert and thieving, has heard the jackdaw blurt the secret of her egg. The tangled mop awaits the bucket, limp and tired. She thinks the unwashed porch for spuming suds must beg. How gay would be the splash of water, how desired! A window full of sun-ray, tow, an endless fairy tale. Behind the stove the house sprite gabbles, quick and clever, of the new tenant's stillness within the churchyard's pale of crosses listening to things nameless forever, of how the dark church entrance lulls the linger dream. The house sprite gabbles on above the bleak hour's darkness. The peasant hut is scowling, pewter eye agleam. The lonely window stares out at the thaw and darkness. Lubov Stolitsa this young woman exhibits a charm which is insistently and delightfully feminine. A Lenten One Noon in golden thaw is garbed with glory. Midnight's wrap of silver snows is hoary. Pink the buds among the aspen ashes, where the diamond hoarfrost softly flashes. My kind cat has furtively departed. But the swallow has returned, high-hearted. Winter grief no more our dumb lips locking, But upon the heart spring grief is knocking. And at noon we weep, our bosoms crossing, Midnight sees us in hot slumber tossing, Quiet lips, knees pressed as though in prayer, But our shadowed eyes are our betrayer. End of section 13 Recording by Kevin Davidson, www.blogordie.com.